Hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Rocket Cairo Podcast, the business and marketing podcast for chiropractors. My name is Jerry, I'm your host. We're going to talk today about two of the most important keys to patient retention. I get reached, uh, I get reached out to chiropractors reach out to me. <laughs> that was not well said. Uh, chiropractors reach out to me on a fairly regular basis uh, when they become clients of mine and will talk to me about patient retention. A lot of times what they'll talk about is just people coming in for a couple of visits and they don't see them anymore. I'm not at all an advocate of keeping people beyond the point that it is appropriate or necessary. I am an advocate of people following through with care. I also am an advocate of offering people ongoing care if that is something that would benefit them. So we're going to talk about what this is the thing that I talk to all of my clients about when the very first thing out of the gate, when they start asking me about patient retention is I'm like, these two things have to be right. If you have these two things right, then that's going to solve a lot of your problems. Now, before I get into that, I do want to say a couple things. Number one is that I had said last week that I was very excited about two things. One, my Buffalo Bills uh, were in the playoffs and they had one. <sighs> we all know how that went. Or if you're not following football, you could probably guess how that went. If you know anything about the Buffalo Bills, I had a client that was new to me. He was listening to some of my old podcasts and he heard me mention being a little bummed because the Bills <laughs> lost in the playoffs. And it was like a podcast from like two years ago. <laughs> and I'm just like, dude, story of my life. Like, it's just, it, it's pretty much normal. It's how it is. This is not unfamiliar territory to me. Uh, at the end of that game, uh, when their kicker was getting ready to kick the field goal, I first of all, didn't expect it to go in. I was like, this is not going to go in. And if we want to add insult to injury, he's going to miss it wide right. And he did. I've been a Bills fan for a long time. I know how this is going to go. So a little bummed about that. The other thing I did tell you guys, and I'm just going to update you, not because you want to care about my life necessarily, but I did mention it that my wife and I were going to find out what the baby was. We found out last week that we are going to have a baby boy. Very, very excited about that. I was kind of hoping for a boy. And uh, so I've added another man child to the stable. And so I'm very, very excited about that. Um, if you want help with your practice, you can check out my Next Step program. It's a great place to get information. If you're just looking for information uh, and you want something affordable, uh, something that's going to be super helpful and you're looking to kind of get you kind of get the wheels going if you don't really know what you're doing from a business and marketing standpoint, that's a great place to start. If you're interested in getting a better website or improvement with your improvements with your SEO, go to Rocket Cairo and request a free practice assessment. Um, I do include my Next Step program with my website uh, members, so just be aware of that. Uh, it's a tremendous amount of value if you're somebody who is interested in both. And so that is something um, that you can get if you end up getting a website from me. So you can check that out. Like I said, rocketcairo.com, practice assessment. That's a great place to start. I'll take a look at your stuff. We'll talk about what your options are. Uh, so patient retention, let's get to the real point here. Uh, so I think there's really two keys to patient retention. I'm going to give you those right up the front and we're just going to talk about each of them. Uh, the first one is onboarding and the second one is going to be follow-up. And those are going to be the basic foundational things that if you don't get these things right, you're going to forever have a retention problem. Now the onboarding goes like this. Uh, the patient comes into your practice and I have the basic outline of what is supposed to go on. Now, obviously your, how you go about doing this is going to be very different from practice to practice. There's all kinds of discussions about what to do, what not to do and cash and insurance and long recommendation, short recommendation. There's tons of different ways to kind of do this, but here's the basic idea. As a chiropractor, first thing you got to do is you got to identify their problem. I, I would say pr their problem and their goal. Uh, this is going to be, this is going to help you one, know whether you can actually help them or not. And two, it's going to help your communication going forward because it is a huge mistake to communicate with someone generically. We always want to be very specific when we're communicating with patients. You want to know what their problem is. Uh, ideally, one of the questions you would ask a patient would be, what are you hoping to achieve from your time here? Or what are you hoping to get out of your care? This is going to give you the goalpost. They're going to tell you what they're hoping for. This is going to be the goal that you're going to be shooting for. It just helps with a lot of clarity so that the chiropractor and the patient is on the same page. And then when you're explaining what you find and what you're going to do to help them, you could explain it within the context of helping them achieve their goal and helping them solve their problem. 
So that's the next thing is, so first thing is you have to identify their problem. Second thing is you're gonna have to provide a solution for their problem, not generically, you're not doing a Jedi mind trick, kind of the old chiropractic, you're not trying to get out of pain. You're, you're trying to reach your fullest health potential. Like stop doing Jedi mind tricks with people. Talk to them about their problem and how chiropractic can help their problem, not only short-term, but long-term. Next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna provide structure for the solution. So you have a solution to that problem, you have to provide uh, structure for that solution. And the last thing you're gonna do is you're gonna solve that problem. Now, where I think chiropractors make the mistake most often when onboarding a patient, there's two mistakes. One we've already talked about, which is we just aren't very good at listening to the patient and describing what we do and communicating what we do, our recommendations and all of that stuff within the context of their particular problem. That's just a, a human thing. Like it's just, just correct that. Don't from now on, when you have a new patient, they're talking to you about their issue. Talk to them about their issue. Don't talk to them about something else or just have your generic chiropractic speech. The other big issue, and I think this is probably the bigger problem that chiropractors will have is the lack of structure. I've talked about this on the podcast a lot, but chiropractors tend to look at the long recommendations and kind of the ridiculous kind of year long 70 visit care plan recommendations and, and almost run away from that so far to the point that they just don't have any recommendations at all. Or the plan that they have for the patient is sort of in the chiropractor's head and it's not really communicated to the patient. This is not the way that you should do uh, chiropractic care. What you need to do is just make sure that you have some sort of plan for what you are doing with this patient. And it's really, really important that you have an agreement. I talked about this on the podcast recently when I talked about the, the mistakes that chiropractors make when they're starting their practice. This was one of those things is avoiding structure and recommendations. It has a huge impact on your patient retention. What should happen is once you've figured out that you can help them and that you can provide a solution to their problem, you need to sit down with that person and say, here's what we're gonna do over the next week. Here's what we're gonna do over the next month. Here's what we're gonna do over the next three months. Whatever the thing is that you're thinking. Now, listen, you don't have to have a silver ball, uh, silver ball, a crystal ball <laughs> or a silver ball. What I don't know what that would do, but you don't have to have a crystal ball. If someone does better than expected, you can see them less. If they do worse than expected, you may see them more. As long as they're heading in the right direction, then you can maintain that doctor patient relationship. You are the leader in this position. You need just to make sure that you have structure. You need to make sure that you have clearly communicated to this person. This is what the plan is. And you need to make sure that you get agreement from them, that they acknowledge, yes, this is the plan. This is what we're going to do. And that they understand if something were to change on their part, maybe their time changes, maybe their money situation changes. If something could change on their side where they need to come and talk to you, that's okay. They, they should know that it's okay to do that. This is a partnership. It's not a 50-50 partnership. You're the leader in this position. Don't, don't have patients guessing and wondering what you're going to do. You have to onboard someone. Now, there's some other things with onboarding patients in terms of you could onboard them to kind of prime the pump for referrals and reviews. You can prime the pump for uh, bringing in family members and things of that nature. There's some other onboarding things that go kind of beyond uh, retention. But if we're just talking about retention, these are the things you have to keep in mind. And I think the two biggest areas of mistake is, is like I said, the chiropractor is either, uh, not communicating in a way that that person feels like their problem is going to be solved or their goals are going to be met. So just make sure you're doing that. And also make sure you have a structure and that there's a plan, everybody's on board, everybody understands what it is, and that you're going forward with agreement and unity with that patient. The next thing is just going to be patient follow-up. The patient follow-up is just this. If, if you don't have a patient follow-up, uh, if you don't have a patient follow-up plan, what tends to happen on one extreme is you just, uh, you miss people, you neglect them. Uh, people that would have scheduled their appointment again, they just get busy, get sidetracked. They don't really get the full benefit of coming into your office and, and getting care. On the flip side of it, you could have people that you harass too much. Like you just don't realize that like your staff is calling them every other week and asking them to reschedule their appointment. That person doesn't want to schedule their appointment. Maybe they feel fine. They feel like you've done a great job. Like they're perfectly happy with everything they've done. And they're like, hey, I'll call you when I need you but you ha don't have any sort of plan and your staff is just calling and calling and calling and calling and calling, texting, 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 texting. This happens a lot where chiropractors will turn people that are advocates and raving fans that are happy with that chiropractor into people that are very unhappy with a chiropractor because they're being harassed. Having a plan, when are you going to contact this person? When are you not going to contact them? When are you going to stop? How much are you going to? How little? How are you going to, how are you going to communicate with them? 
This could be different from office to office. The point is you have to have a plan. If you don't have a plan, you're either going to miss people or you're going to harass people. Both of those extremes are wrong. So what are the two plans? The two plans are going to be short-term and long-term. The short-term plan is what do you do when a person misses an appointment who's under active care? This is someone who is coming in, you know, once a week or more that, or, or maybe, maybe even every other week, but I would say probably once a week or more, I would consider that like more active care. When this person misses an appointment, how are you following up with them? You're obviously not going to, let's say you text them or you call them. You're not going to wait a month or two or three before you reach out to them again, because they're, they're under active care. They're supposed to be in here now. So that the communication and the amount that you reach out to them is going to be a lot shorter and a lot tighter. And you just have to have a plan for what are we going to do? When are we going to do it? If we don't hear from this person and when do we stop? Like, when do we stop bugging this person? If it's been a week or two weeks, we haven't heard from this person. Are we going to go ahead and just, you know, file them away as a patient that is, you know, kind of in a long-term contact, they kind of fall into that next category, which is your long-term follow-up. Long-term follow-up is something that you're reaching out to a person, maybe once a quarter, maybe once every six months, something like that, where you're just touching base. And, and the, the point of short-term follow-up is you're trying to get that person back in right away because they're supposed to be under active care unless they tell you otherwise. So the goal is get, get this person scheduled right away. The goal for long-term follow-up is you're just checking in and you're just trying to get people in who need to come in, who just haven't, they've just, yeah, they got sidetracked. They got busy. Ah, their backs kind of bother them a little bit, but it's not bothering them bad enough that they called yet. Or maybe there, it is bothering them a lot and they've just kind of forgotten that they should go to the chiropractor. I mean, some, that happens and it's kind of crazy, but it does happen. And so that's the point of long-term follow-up. Long-term follow-up is you're just touching base with the person. Assume they're doing great. Assume that they're happy with you. You're just touching base and saying, hey, we're just trying to get a hold of you. Haven't seen you in a while. Uh, if you need anything, if anything's bothering you, don't hesitate to give us a call. This would be a great time to come in. That's that's it. Call them, text them. You can email them. You could do some combination of the things. We used to send letters back in the day, which I imagine most chiropractors aren't doing anymore because it's old-fashioned and you know I'm old. But... That's the idea. And if you do these two things well, where you're onboarding people, you're getting agreement, you're focusing on their problem, not somebody else's problem, or not some generic problem that chiropractic solves. And then you're doing follow-up where when a person's going through active care, you're staying on top of them, making sure they're getting back in here and completing their care. Uh, and if they're not going to complete their care, you understand why. And you now now maybe you have a long-term follow-up where, where it's like, hey, this person, they said, if someone told us, they said, hey, I'm feeling great. I'll just let you know when it, when, when it bothers me again. We would say, no problem. Hey, no problem. We're glad you're, you're feeling better. You know what? If we haven't heard from you in a, in a few months, we'll probably just check in to see how you're doing. We tell people that all the time because we want, we're, we're trying to set expectations for our patients. We just want them to know, hey, you know, if we haven't heard from you in six months, we, we may just check in, see how you're doing. And we never, we're not at trying to pressure. We're not trying to guilt someone. We're not trying to help make them feel bad. There's not, not a lot of value in doing that. And there are chiropractic coaches and there are seminars and there's, there's groups that sort of teach that thing, or at least have taught that thing in the past where the idea is, you know, you're just trying to, you're questioning someone's commitment level. You're questioning someone's, you know, if they, they, I can't afford care. Like you're, you're, you're questioning their commitment or how much they really, you know, oh yeah, you, you have money for cigarettes. You don't have money for chiropractic. It's like, I think that those things are not super helpful. I think they're really detrimental. I think what we should be doing as chiropractors is be really good at mediating, be really good at, at leading, being really good at finding alternative solutions to problems. Those are things that we should be doing. When you're calling someone and you're checking in or you're calling someone to get them back scheduled, your staff should know we're not harassing people or making them feel bad or anything of the sort. We're just trying to be here to help. And if they're not following through with their care and they need to be, it is not helpful for them. It's not best for them. So we're doing this for that reason. If you put that on your staff, let's say you don't want to do it. And you're just like, oh, you harass them. I don't want to. They're going to be anxious about it as well. And they're not going to want to do it as well. It takes a lot of pressure off of them too to know we're just checking in. We're just trying to do what's best for people. We're just following up. If they ask us not to call them anymore, we won't. If, they, if it's been a year and a half or two years, because you have to also decide when you're going to stop. Maybe we haven't heard from this person at all and it's been a year and a half. Maybe we're just going to, we, we just won't worry about calling them or checking in with them. Like they're, they, they can always come back if they want to, but we don't have to harass them. Like those are things that you have to decide. It shouldn't be a high pressure thing for you. It shouldn't be a high pressure thing for your staff. Now with texting and stuff that it, it shouldn't even be that difficult because the, the texting is probably the most effective way 
of checking in with people in terms of people actually getting the message. And even as an introvert, uh, I'm perfectly fine with texting people. <laughs> and so definitely take advantage of technology since the technology is there. But you have to have a plan. And this is the basics. This is your foundational starting point for patient retention. If you don't get these things right, you're just going to forever have a patient retention problem. You just are. And there are other aspects that go into it, but I feel like this is the foundation. And anytime someone talks to me about patient retention issues, these are the first things we talk about. It is incredibly rare that I talk to someone who has patient retention issues and they're like, no, no, I'm doing both these things. I'm, I'm hitting it out of the park. Usually I'm talking to someone and they're just like, huh? Yeah, I'm not doing that as well as I could, or I'm not doing that at all. You got to fix it. This is the starting point. All right, guys, that's it. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you for listening to the podcast. Uh, thank you for sharing the podcast with your chiropractor friends. I appreciate it. And letting other people know about the Rocket Chiro Pro podcast, it really, really helps me out a lot. If you want to leave a review for the podcast or for the services that I provide, you can go to Rocket Cairo and leave a Google review by clicking on the main menu where it says review us. If you want help with growing your practice, uh, whether that's through your website and SEO or through some business and marketing help, go to Rocket Cairo, check out my products and services. You will be glad that you did. I'm done. I'm out of here. I will go ahead and talk to you on the next episode. See ya.